equation uh, what we will uh, learn how the transition takes place between different energy levels and what is the emission rate what is the transition rate that we, will, we are going to uh, study so here already we have discussed okay already we have discussed this uh, three different process absorption emission process that is uh, in emission we have two process one is spontaneous another another one stimulated emission process okay so in this uh, process first we will consider only two levels for easy way after that uh, if you want to derive also you can derive for three level four level system also but that is not in our syllabus no need to worry so here first one here we are taking only two energy levels okay this is ground state energy e1 and excited state energy e2 okay when you give some energy to ground state atoms okay mostly atoms are uh, sit in the ground state because this is a highly stable energy level okay so once you give some energy to these atoms these atoms go under transition to the excited state okay this is what we are calling absorption process or induced absorption process so here this absorption rate if you take this is a any doubt beta b uh, i am writing a, a gamma 1 to i am writing so that means transition level 1 to level 2 okay atoms are going from ground state to excited state okay when they absorb some energy they are making transition okay so this is gamma 1 to is the transition rate that means what what is the transition rate how you will define it how many number of atoms undergo transition from ground state to excited state for unit time and unit value that is the absorption rate this one is absorption rate okay. this time writing absorption rate is proportional to the here it will depend on number of particles or number of atoms how many atoms present in the ground state or how many particles present in the ground state okay that is we are writing number of particles n1 right so and also this absorption rate is proportional to and what what parameter it will depend the energy density of the atoms that you can write u of nu as a function of frequency we are writing okay so this is uh, the absorption rate mainly depends on two parameters one is the number of atoms in the ground state and second one is the energy density of the atom so see suppose uh, this absorption suppose only two particles are there two atoms are there that is that is required less energy okay and you will make uh, transition only two transition takes place and also while emitting from excited state to ground state only two photons will come okay that's why it is always depends on number of atoms in the ground state and also why it is depending on energy density of the atom see here suppose here three we are taking three levels here suppose i am taking three level that is e3 and e2 and e1 suppose you want to send atoms from e1 state to e3 state you need a higher energy right and compared to atoms if you want to send atoms e2 to e3 here you require less energy okay right here in the first transition you need higher energy in the second transition you need lower energy that's why the transition rate always depends on the energy density of the atoms are okay energy density means energy per unit value you can take okay or if you consider area energy per unit area if you take value you can uh, write energy for unit value okay that's why it always depends the absorption rate number of particles in the ground state and energy dens density of the atoms in the ground state okay so from this equation you can rewrite this one why we, we are writing one two here this one two subscript one two indicates transitions are taking place from state one to state two or ground state to excited state or energy level one to energy level two that's it okay it is proportional to the n1 and u of nu okay this is the new means frequency as a function of frequency we are taking that means it's a energy in the within uh, frequency range we are considering okay so 
here if you remove this proportionality constant you can write b12 okay b1 this is a some proportionality constant that is einstein absorption coefficient this one what b12 is the einstein absorption coefficient you can write it einstein absorption coefficient okay einstein absorption coefficient okay so this is let's take equation 1 Okay. Is this clear up to now? Any doubt here? Yeah. So, sorry, first... second, sir. Yeah, sorry. Explain one second, sir. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. So, first two we have studied absorption process. Absorption means when you, when you give some energy to ground state atoms or particles this will make transition to higher energy state or excited state energy okay this transition rate you can write gamma 1 2 or you can uh, write any symbol it's not a problem okay here we are indicating 1 2 means state uh, level 1 to level 2 or ground state to excited state okay this transition rate absorption rate so what is absorption rate means here how many number of atoms making transition to ground state to excited state for unit time and unit value okay that is the absorption rate means it is proportional to the number of atoms in the ground state and also energy density of the atoms okay suppose here if you will see second diagram suppose you want to send atoms from e2 level to e3 level there you require less energy okay suppose you want to send atoms from e1 level to e3 level there you need higher energy that's why always this transition rate is depends on uh, how many atoms sending to the higher energy states and also what is the energy of this atoms or energy density you can say energy density of the atoms okay that's why we are writing the absorption rate is proportional to the number of particles n1 means number of particles in the ground state okay so and also energy density okay if you write this one if you remove this proportionality constant you can uh, proportionality you can write b12 this is the proportionality constant that is we are calling einstein absorption coefficient okay let's take this is equation 1 okay and this is absorption process is done next we will go to the emission process okay emission process we have two process one is stimul uh, spontaneous emission another is stimulated emission here you so once atoms making transition to excited level okay this e2 and e1 i am drawing again so atoms because of the very li very short lifetime of excited state atoms whatever atoms in the excited state immediately come to the ground state okay immediately this come to the ground state okay here this is also here we are writing a absorption rate u21 okay sorry this is spontaneous emission rate okay this is proportional to only number of atoms in the higher energy state suppose here 10 atoms are there suppose here four atoms are there this will make transition from e2 level to e1 level suppose here 10 atoms are there 10 atoms will make transition to ground excited state to ground state this is here to jumping this atoms it, it doesn't need any energy you can directly jump suppose you want to climb a uh, first floor you need some energy but you want to jump from first floor to ground floor you know don't need energy just you can simply jump or second floor or third floor any floor also you can directly jump but to climb that uh, step, floor second or third whatever you need energy for climbing you need energy but jumping you don't need energy that's why it it doesn't depend on energy density only it will depend on how many particles or how many atoms are jumping from higher energy state to lower energy state okay that is why we are writing only n2 proportional to n2 here 2 to 1 means transitions taking place from higher energy level 2 to lower energy level 1 okay once you remove this proportionality you can write u21 is you can uh, write a21 and n2 this is equation 2 a21 is the einstein's absorption coefficient okay einstein's absorption coefficient okay then we have one more process that is stimulated emission process okay so here also once this atoms make here one photon will emit for a if one atom makes transition from excited state e2 to e1 
in the spontaneous process one photon will emit okay so suppose if 10 photons will uh, make transition from higher energy state to, state to lower energy state 10 photons will emit okay why they are making a uh, immediately ground state what is the reason to jumping immediately making transition uh, as spontaneous what is the reason where the why they are making oh, sorry their lifetime is very less yeah very good so because of very uh, less short uh, uh, less uh, lifetime so short lifetime they are immediately coming to the ground state okay they are not staying in the excited state okay so here in this uh, two process we have completed now we will consider in stimulated emission process this is also so atoms are in the excited state okay. here e1 and e2 for simplification we are taking only two levels okay if you, if you go uh, laser process there is a three level system four level system in that place uh, also you can derive the rate equation there it is a little complex so here also atoms from if you give some energy to excited state atoms some energy whatever energy okay these photons will interact atoms in the excited state and these atoms make transition to the ground state okay these atoms whatever atoms in the excited state they are themselves they are not coming they are coming by forcefully okay the external energy or external photons are stimulating these atoms or external photons are triggering these atoms to come down okay that's why these atoms are coming by forcefully so while coming to ground state they lost energy in the form of photon that is photon that is emitted photon and also this incident photon also emit okay here suppose one atom make transition from excited state to ground state here two photons will emit okay this is stimulated emission process okay why we are calling stimulated emission means these atoms making transition by stimulating some external photons that is what so here also we are uh, uh, taking stimulated emission rate okay emission rate means how many atoms or how many particles making transition from excited state to ground state with force with external force okay that is the for unit volume and unit uh, time okay it is also proportional to how many atoms present in the excited state suppose 10 atoms present so uh, you will get 20 you will emit this will emit 20 photons and also here to trigger this atom suppose here only one atom is there suppose you are sending only one photon here only one atom is there so this photon energy completely given to this for this atom only suppose here four atoms are there you are sending only one photon so this photon energy is shared to these four atoms that's why it depends on how many atoms present in the excited state okay so that's why we are writing proportional to n1 n2 and this is also depends on what is the energy level of this state okay suppose this you are incidenting some photon this photon energy should be higher than this energy then only atoms it will release okay otherwise it is not sufficient to uh, release these atoms okay that's why it will depend on energy density also okay so here only stimulated stimulated absorption or induced absorption and induced or you can say stimulated emission will depend on only energy density and particle but spontaneous emission only depends on number of particles okay if you rewrite these two equations gamma 2 1 proportional to the number of particles sent to and energy density of the particles okay so from this equation you can rewrite this gamma 2 1 is here b 2 1 and this is also you can write n2 and u of nu nu okay this is b21 is the stimulated emission coefficient okay einstein's stimula stimulated emission coefficient now we have derived three rate equations three rate equation here see one more important thing here so whatever this absorption whatever atoms going to the excited state should be equal to the emission rate right whatever suppose here you are sending 10 
three atoms to excited state. So these atoms uh, coming to the ground state by two process, whatever spontaneous or stimulated emission. The absorption rate must be equal to the emission rate. Okay, that's why here we will equal this uh, absorption rate to emission rate. Then we'll try to solve the this coefficient. Okay. Here absorption rate, you can write absorption rate, rate must be equal to the emission rate, okay, emission rate. This is under equilibrium condition. Suppose you are continuously giving some energy here, but this is not uh, equal. So when there is a thermally equilibrium or equilibrium condition, this absorption rate is must be equal to the emission rate. So here what is the absorption rate, What what is we have derived? What is the equation? Equation one. What is the equation one? Did you remember? One two equals to b one two into n one u u of mu. Yeah, very good. Okay, b one two u of mu equal to, and here emission rate we have two process. One is spontaneous, another is stimulated emission. In spontaneous emission. So you can write a two one and n two. Okay, here sorry, here one more is there. N one is there, right? So and stimulated emission b two one and n two and u of nu. Okay, this is the equation. First one is the left hand side is absorption rate and right hand side is the emission rate. First term in the right uh, on the right hand side is spontaneous emission. And second one is stimulated emission. Okay, from this equation, just to clearly observe this equation. Left hand side you have energy density, and right hand side you have energy density. You bring these two terms one side. Okay, I am bringing this uh, right hand term to left hand side. Okay, just you bring it out. N one U of nu minus B two one N two U of nu. Okay, here A two one N two. Okay, right. So in these two terms, u of nu is very, uh, it is common. So you take out that one. Okay, u of nu into b one two n one minus b two one n two. Right. So just here only main job is to just write the rate equation. After that only very mathematical simplifications only. Okay. From there you can write u of nu is equal. A two one n two by A two one n two by B one two n one and B two one n two. Okay, this is equation. Let's uh, take fourth. So now here, just what you will do? You will divide it. You will divide it with divide with n two. Okay, otherwise you take out. Uh, you divide uh, or you take common A n two. Whatever you can do it. So once you do it. Once you divide it with n2, this will n1 by n2, and here b21 remains, right? Isn't it? Is it correct? Is this correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So yesterday we have discussed. Uh, let's uh, let's take this one four. Okay, equation four. Yesterday we have discussed this uh, population inversion. In that population inversion, we have discussed one more thing also. That is Boltzmann. Equation. What is that equation? Boltzmann uh, ratio, population ratio. N2 by N1 equals to e power minus e2 minus e1 by e2. Yeah, very good, very good, excellent. Minus e2 minus e1 by k t. Right. This is the Boltzmann constant, Boltzmann equation. Using this one, you can uh, find out the population density or population ratio. You can estimate. Okay. So in the equation four, we need n1 by n2, but here we have n2 by n2. So you can reverse this equation. Okay. So you can rewrite this equation n1 by n2 e equal to e to the four of uh, e2 minus e1 by kt. So here, suppose you have two energy levels e2 and e1. Okay. So here you can write e2 minus E1 is equal to h nu, right? This you can write equation. You can write this equation. So instead of e2 minus e1, you can write h nu. Okay. Just you write here. You replace e2 minus e1 
with h nu okay by kt okay so this equation simply substitute in the equation form so uh, after that if you substitute this equation p of nu is equal a to 1 by here b to 1 and e to the 4 of h nu by kt minus b to 1 right so this is uh, let's take fire uh, whatever you can take it's not a problem so up to now we have done now what we have to do so next step is very important this you should uh, recall it so when you studied uh, quantum mechanics here also this is energy planck's energy density we have derived this equation planck's energy density when atoms making transition from a ground state to excited state they will emit the radiation that radiation we have derived that u of nu is called 8 pi h nu cube by c into 1 by e to the 4 of h nu by kt minus 1 okay kt minus 1 is this one so have you derived this form uh, the have you derived this formula yes sir did you remember i don't know uh, it's long long back i think uh, you here uh, here one c cube is there okay 8 pi h nu cube by c cube into 1 e to the 4 of h nu here minus 1 is there right in the Boltzmann equation isn't it here minus 1 is there so okay so this is the equation from Planck's radiation law or Planck's energy density uh, we have calculated in the first unit so once you go through you can uh, recall that or once you go through that uh, formula then it is uh, clear okay Sorry, sorry. Here no minus one. That's correct one. So here we have solved this one. So now you compare. This is also energy density, and we have derived this one also energy density. Equation four, and here what we say equation five. Let's take five. Are uh, oh okay. This equation five and equation six are equal. Same. They are uh, giving same result or same answer. Energy density. This is also energy density as a function of frequency. This is also energy density as a function of frequency. So e equal five and six. Equal five and six. So once you equal this one, eight pi h nu cube by c cube into one by e to the four of h nu by k t minus one. Okay. On the right hand side also, you want you can take a to 1 by b to 1 e to the 4 of h nu by kt minus here b to 1 so here what is the difference here here minus 1 is there here minus b to 1 is there so how you will rewrite this one as like this one so for that you have to take out this b to 1 common or you can divide it with b to 1 numerator and denominator okay you divide numerator and denominator with b to 1 then this uh, turns out as a this left hand side okay so i am dividing with b to 1 okay so a to 1 by b to 1 and here you can write e to the 4 of h nu by kt minus 1 okay so here you can write uh, this both terms 8 pi 1 by e to the 4 of h nu by kt minus 1 okay if you closely compare these two results, if you compare closely, so here, here a to 1 by b to 1 is equal to 1, 1, okay, a to 1 by b to 1 is equal to, sorry, here b1 to right, here b to 1, this is b to 1, b to This is the first term. What is the first term here? Nobody is saying. This is B12, not B21. Isn't it? Are you observing this one? Yes, sir. Not telling. Okay. If I do mistake, just uh, see. Now. So compare these two terms in the numerator and denominator. This A21 by B21 is equal to the this term okay this term is equal to this term so a to 1 b to 1 
a21 by b21 equal to 8 pi h nu cube by c cube and here in the denominator b12 compare with here suppose let's take one is there okay one into e to the power of h nu by kt minus one here also this term into e to the power of h nu by h nu by kt minus one okay if you compare these two relations okay b12 by b21 equal to one okay that means you can write this one b12 is equal b21 okay and this is the relationship between einstein coefficient so b12 is equal to b21 means what b12 is what is the b12 what is the b12 What is the B12 or what is the B21? What is this coefficient? Just uh, Einstein absorption and stimulated emission coefficient, right? Isn't it? Yes, sir. So that means here we can say that from this equation the stimulated or uh, induced absorption coefficient is equal to the stimulated emission coefficient and in this equation this is equation uh, let's take a and b or whatever you can take so a to 1 by b to 1 is the spontaneous emission coefficient to stimulated emission coefficient okay emission this is the only ratio between emission coefficient coefficients one is spontaneous other one is stimulated emission that is equal to 8 pi h nu cube by c cube so this coefficient the ratio mainly depends on frequency right here nu cube is there h and c is the constant h is means Planck constant c is the light velocity this ratio mainly depends on frequency that means what energy levels suppose this is energy is related to frequency and and this will depends on indirectly energy levels of the system energy levels of the system the spontaneous to stimulated emission ratio mainly depends on energy levels or frequency of the atoms okay and so what is the use of finding these equations so this ratio spontaneous to stimulated emission ratio is equal to this much value okay and here also say in the second equation spawn uh, whatever absorption rate is equal to the emission rate okay so using this equation what is the use of this equation means you can estimate what is the spontaneous emission rate suppose atoms making transition from excited state to ground state how much energy is releasing how much what is the uh, what is the radiation okay what is the radiation density how much energy is releasing are if stimulated emission process is taking place from excited states to ground state here also you can say how much power is generating you during this transition or how much radiation is emitting during this radiation using this coefficient we can estimate the radiation and also radiation and we can estimate it okay use and also we can estimate this number of particles also you can estimate using this equation how many particles are there in the ground state excited state also you can estimate and also this is the and if you have suppose here two level system we have and if you go go to other layers there is a three level system in this case what is the absorption rate and what is the emission rate from different energy levels suppose here e2 e3 e1 if you take three levels what is the absorption rate from ground state to excited state what is the emission rate from e3 to e1 e2 e3 to e2 and e2 to e1 okay here also you can estimate the rate equations suppose here also absorption rate 1 3 and emission rate 3 1 3 2 and like that you can estimate the emission rate and you can also estimate how much radiation is emitting in this three level system or how much radiation is emitting the four level system depends on energy levels the emitted radiation also increases or decreases depends on energy levels and 
availability of number of atoms okay so here it is very easy just first you 